Good sandpaper isn't cheap, so naturally we want to get the most mileage as possible out of it. So we keep that old tattered disc on the sander way too long, perhaps without realizing that we're doing more harm than good, and we really aren't saving that much money in reality. In this short video, I'll explain why stretching the lifespan of that sandpaper is a bad thing. I'll show you how to know if you're pushing it too far, and I'll give you a couple tips to help you get the most out of the sandpaper you have without suffering the consequences of going too far. I'll be focusing on random orbital sanding disks, but the same applies to things like rotary sanders or vibrating sanders, belt sanders, even hand sanding to some extent. First of all, why is it a bad idea to overuse your sandpaper? Well, first, it's going to waste your valuable time. As that grit wears out, the speed at which it removes the material dramatically decreases. You know exactly what I'm talking about because you've done it before. It's pretty obvious. Now, it may be that you think you have more time than you have money, but I'd argue that your time is worth more than the few pennies that you're actually saving. We'll get to the actual calculations in a minute. But the fact is, you're not just wasting your time. You could also be screwing up your project. Worn out sandpaper can shed little bits of grit. Those stray pieces get stuck beneath your sander like a bit of gravel in your shoe. And the result is often deep scratches that stand out like a sore thumb and even create more work to remove when you finally do change your disc. You're also potentially wrecking your tools. When you try to stretch the life of a worn out disc, what do you usually do? You push down harder on the sander to get that worn grit to bite into the wood better and start cutting faster again. Here's a little exercise that shows just what that pressure is doing to the tool. Notice the mark on the side of the disc. As excess pressure is applied, the movement of that mark changes. The rotation pattern is disrupted. This is a prime cause of those ugly pigtails and curly Q scratches that wreck a finish but it's also hard on the sander's bearings and on the sanding pad itself. Excess pressure creates excess heat. That heat damages those tiny little hooks that hold your sanding disc on the sander. If you've ever had a sander that shoots discs across the shop, you've probably experienced worn hooks and you need a new pad, and that sanding pad can sometimes cost half as much of a new sander. Is it worth the risk of screwing up the project or even damaging the sander just to save a few sanding discs? Well, let's do the math. This is my favorite sanding disc. It's 3M Cubitron. It comes in a mesh like this. I also like it in their regular that has the swirl of holes. Now, when you consider that it cuts faster and lasts longer than anything I've ever used, it's really the least expensive sandpaper out there, even at about a buck 25 a disc. I'll link to the family-run business I buy them from below this video. Seriously, just try one pack, you'll see what I mean. Now, many years ago, before I learned these lessons the hard way, I'd try to stretch the life of my sanding disc by sometimes up to two or three times. So if I was working on a decent-sized project that might have required two or three discs per grit to cover it, I'd try to do it with just one or two per grit. Now, if I'm using three different grits, I might save up to six sanding discs, depending on the size of the project. And I thought that was great. But how much was I really saving? Well, back then, I wasn't buying the good sandpaper, I can tell you that. But let's apply it to the best discs on the market. Six discs at a buck twenty-five each is a savings of $7.50. Now, think about it. I probably spend a small fortune on the wood because you know what wood costs these days. I probably spent no small amount on a good finish, which isn't cheap these days either. And I use countless thousands or hun hundreds of dollars back then worth of tools to make the project. Plus, I invested untold hours of my time and energy into a project that I really wanted to look good. And I'm sweating $7.50? And that paltry savings didn't come without a cost. It took me a lot longer to do that sanding. I put unneeded wear and tear on my sander. And as soon as the light hits the finish, I can guarantee you I was seeing pigtail scratches and uneven surfaces that really ruined my project. It was silly. 
sanding discs. Even the best ones just aren't that big of an expense in the long run. If it feels like it's time for a new one, just change it. Your work will be more pleasurable, your tools will last longer, and your results will be much better. So how do you know when it's time to change your sanding disc or your sanding belt or your sandpaper? Well, it starts with how it feels as you use it. When the disc is new, take note of how it feels when you move your sander across the surface. Note how it bites into the wood. Notice the torque of the tool as it tries to turn in your grip. As the paper wears, you'll feel those things begin to diminish, and eventually the sander will feel like it's kind of skating and sliding around without biting in much. You'll also notice a decrease in the speed at which the paper is cutting. Perhaps when you started, you were removing visible marks and scratches in the wood in one or two light passes, but over time it begins to take four or five passes to get those same results. That's when it's time to at least examine the disc. If there are holes and tears, if the edges are all worn away, that's a good sign the disc has reached the end of its lifespan and it's time to change it. If it doesn't look excessively worn, but the performance seems to have decreased by a significant amount, you may just have to clean it. Sandpaper designed for woodworking typically has extra room between the bits of grit for the dust to accumulate. When these spaces fill up, the grit can cut less effectively even if it still remains sharp. You have to keep your sandpaper clean during use, and this is usually best done by attaching a shop vacuum to your sander. Lacking that option, you may have to pause from time to time and blow the cake dust out of the grit with some compressed air. Keep in mind that resinous wood, like pine, can be more difficult to clean up because it can gum up your sandpaper. Sometimes you can run the sander over a rubber stick, which is made for the purpose of cleaning sanding grit, or even an old shoe sole and that can give your paper a new life. Eventually though, the disc will just wear to the point where it just doesn't have the bite into the wood anymore and you feel like you're getting nowhere, even if you clean it. That's when it's time to change it and it will be the best $1.25 you spend that day, I guarantee it. But here's another important tip that'll help you get the most from your sanding disc. You have to store these things properly. If you have an unheated or uncooled shop or garage in a, shed or a basement, don't buy a new pack of sanding discs or sanding belts or whatever and just toss them in a drawer or under a bench. Humidity might wreck these things before you even get a chance to wear them out. Changes in humidity can cause the backing to swell or shrink while the adhesive that holds on the grit remains constant. This can compromise the bond between the two and the grit can eventually fall off when you do start to use it or the fuzzy backing can start to peel away. Go look at your sandpaper in your shop. Are the discs cupped or curled? Are the belts twisted and misshapen? That's the effect of humidity and it is shortening their lives. If you can't store your discs in a climate controlled environment such as inside your house, consider putting them in a sealed Ziploc bag or in a plastic container to minimize, to minimize the change in the humidity in the air around them. Don't forget to check out the Cubitron sandpaper if you haven't already. I'm telling you, it's going to change the way you sand. I am not kidding. Use the link below this video, and I'll see you next time.